Everyone knows that setups in racing games are a complicated matter. But they don't have to be, because with a few simple clicks on the right setting, you can transform the car's behavior massively. And with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg. ACC version 1.9 has been out for a couple of weeks now and I've had some time to fiddle with setups and figure out what works and what does not. But as I know that not everyone has the time to learn the ins and outs of the setup sheet, I prepared 5 easy setup tricks to incorporate in your setup work that will lead to massive changes in the car's driving behavior. Before we dive in though, some basic groundwork knowledge that everybody should know before touching anything in the setup menu. If you feel like a pro already, maybe jump to this timestamp. Otherwise, the following information will be crucial. Tire pressures are the most important thing in ACC and with version 1.9 their behavior changed once more. The ideal range of pounds per square inch or PSI for short for a GT3 car is 26 to 27. But that doesn't mean that 26.5 is the ideal pressure to aim at. Every step is viable. But keep in mind that lower pressures lead to more grip, but less responsiveness and higher temperatures. So if you are racing on a track with many high speed turns like Silverstone or Laguna Seca, maybe aim for some higher pressures to gain stability and a faster turn in. Before you touch the pressures, do 3-4 to four laps, then set them up correctly. And afterwards, we can start talking about setups, okay? Because if you skip that part of the process, you won't be able to make any meaningful decisions about how the car actually behaves on track. Another basic tip, if you can't drive consistently, it will be really hard to figure out what you want to change in the setup. That doesn't mean you shouldn't fiddle with them if you can't drive like an alien, because a stable setup will help you gain that consistency. But if your racing line changes every lap, you can't hit the apex to save your life and it's hard for you to even keep the car on track, you should rather select a safe preset and start working on the driving basics instead. The most important point of how a car handles sits in the cockpit. It's not the plane, sir. It's the pilot. So start working on you first. And when you know the racing line and something is hindering you from going consistently lap in lap out at the same pace, the following tips will start helping you. Welcome back to everyone who skipped. Already subscribed to Overtake? No? <laughs> Maybe it's finally time you take that step. And while you're at it, also leave a like. And ring the bell for mobile notifications so you never miss any of our new uploads. But let's start with some tips for medium to high speed turns like 130R, Abbey or Eau Rouge Radion on Spa. In general, the aero balance of your car will determine how fast you can take a corner. So all the settings on the last page right here. Of course, if the car is pressed against the track by the downforce, the tires on the front and the rear axles have more grip and the car does not understeer out of the corner so easily. So rear wing up and you're ready to go. No, not quite. <laughs> by increasing the rear wing, the rear of the car gets more pressed to the ground, which will lead to the front lifting off a bit. Thus you'll add loads of understeer at the front. But in ACC, this dynamic can easily be countered by adding some rake, meaning we are lifting the tail end up. When you're experiencing loads of understeer and fast turns either on the apex or later on exit, you should increase the rear wing by one or two, lower the right height on the nose if possible, and most importantly, add 2 mm of right height at the rear. This way, we are counteracting the negative effects of the wing and will get less understeer at the front and less oversteer at the rear which will help through all the fast corners out there. This is so effective that you should always go in small increments and add more rake only if oversteer at the rear does not drastically increase. But trust me, this is the easiest way to get rid of understeer in fast corners and is absolute game-changing knowledge in ACC. 
And if you're still struggling with understeer in faster corners, there are two amazing hacks that will increase the liveliness of your rear and get you that sweet, sweet slip angle. First, play with the rear toe and decrease it bit by bit. You will notice that in all turning phases, the car will be more likely to turn, but will lose some of its stability under braking and cornering as well. So finding the right balance is as always the key here. But less toe can be a game changer if you have the feeling that the rear is just too immobile, leading to honesty of course. In short, this also works the other way around with more toe, giving better braking stability and a calmer tail end. The other trick of increasing the liveliness of your rear has to do with the bump stops. Usually the rear bump stop range is set quite high with the aggressive preset, which leads to an yeah, understeery setup. My advice, set this to 15 and decrease the range from there incrementally. This is an absolute game changer. It will bring your car to life and give you yeah, loads of turn on the exit of faster corners. But what about slower turns? This is where the mechanical grip tab from the setup menu comes into play. Here you can set the roll bars, the bump stops and other settings that will influence the mechanical grip of the car. Or in other words, how much grip you can generate with your tires alone. So let's talk about all three phases, entry, mid corner and exit for slow corners and number one of our list of things to do, fixing understeer. So let's talk about all three phases, entry, mid corner and exit for slow corners. First, if you are suffering from bad turning, the easiest thing to adjust is the brake balance. Put it further to the back, maybe a percent, two, three, and test again if your problem is fixed. If not, we move on to the bump stops because they are amazing in getting rid of understeer. We go one click higher front range, one click lower front rate, one click lower front wheel rate and lastly one click less anti-roll bar at the front. And no, you shouldn't do all of them at once. Start from the top of the list and work your way down. And make sure to test after each change to see if the car has already achieved the handling you are searching for or whether your car has already lost that stability in the faster turns of the track. Because that is what will happen if you go too soft with those settings. <laughs> but those four easy clicks are universal on fixing understeer and slower turns. And if you're struggling with oversteer, just do the opposite. So one click lower front range, one click higher front rate, one click click higher front wheel rate and one click higher front roll bar. And my fifth tip for today is about overheating tires. If your tire hut shows yellow, orange or red spots on the outside of your tire surface, you should consider adjusting the following. Open the brake ducts in the arrow menu by one click, so go for higher numbers. That will lead to cooler brakes, which will radiate less heat onto the tires. And if that doesn't help, try less camber at the front as well as reducing the toe a bit. And the biggest tip of them all for overheating tires, adjust the dampers. For that, we move over to the damper screen and here we adjust the fast dampers and slow dampers by lowering them by two clicks. This will lead to the tire having more contact time with the road, resulting in more grip and less sliding. Again, you will lose some stability in return, but this really can fix overheating easily. What tips would you give to a follow ACC player? Let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll do a part two with your recommendations. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you need more ACC, check out this live event I joined from Kunos where I competed against some of the biggest names in the sim racing bubble. That was crazy, but that's it for me today. See you next time around. Cheers!